Do you know how to rig a wave sail? Well, I'm coming at you with a rigging guide. Yes, I know what you're thinking. I know how to rig my sail, Ben. Do you? Do you? I've got the brand new Evoke from Simmerstyle here. This is the first time I've opened it. Well, actually I lied. I have opened it, took the wrapping out, but it's brand new, never rigged it. I'm gonna rig it for you today. I'm gonna to talk you through a few little tips, a few things you should be looking out for, because there's a few old school bros out there I see have been putting maybe too much down all on some of the newer school sales, and that is a no-no. So again, we've got a few little tips. I'm gonna rig it up. Uh, let's get it on. This is a 4.5. So if you are a Simmer style rider, and let's say you've been riding the Icon for years, the Icon has been that sail for a lot of people. It's gone. We've kicked it out the door, it's gone. Why? Because we've got this sail, this is the Evoke. So it's a four band sail until four seven, and then the five meter and above is in five band. And this works super well. I've had some really good feedback on it, um, and it will be fitting underneath the black tip. So this is more for your all round guy, the one who wants a bit more forgiveness and not that total top end of the black tip. The black tip has gone a bit more lighter and towards the more, Pro rider, I don't want to say pro rider, but advanced rider down the line, Alessio Stilrich, that's going to be his sale. I'm going to be moving on to this Evoke. Let's get it rigged up. I'm like keen to get this thing rigged up. Obviously, I've sailed some of the prototypes, but I haven't rigged a full production. I just got this in the post yesterday. So firstly, always roll your sail, sounds basic, downwind. Now, Actually, as I say that, I've just had a flashback to doing the Send It Academy in Cape Town, and my man, Colin Whippy Dixon, says roll it upwind. And now you're all confused, you're thinking, what is the correct way? Well, actually, the correct way is, what they tell you in the, in the, in the coaching is to rig it upwind. Watch, I'll show you why. If you unroll it downwind, blows up everywhere, it starts bouncing around, you get creases in your sail. Now you don't want that, especially with a brand new sail. So what you do is you position it into the wind. Put your mass together, always make sure the ferrule here is clean. I've already cleaned this uh, very well. You put some sand in here, it can be a nightmare in the back end. So always make sure that's clean and free from stuff. Some people put a bit of tape around there. That can be a really good thing to do. If you leave your sail on the beach in sandy weather, I don't know how, I don't know how it does it, but sand finds its way in there. It's a mystery, but it does. If you put a bit of tape around, sometimes, you know, electrical tape, that stuff kind of sticks to itself and doesn't stick too much to the mass. It's a good tip. I did make a video ages ago where actually you have a little bit of rubber inner tube here and you roll it over. I haven't got it on my mass right now, but it is a quite a good tip. So from here, obviously, mass goes in. Basic stuff, this, obviously. And this is why, if you're rigging this into the wind, you see, it's not blowing anywhere. It's a bit more painful to do because you've got to kind of feed it through. And then you just put the mast down into that. It's obviously, it's not banging around in the wind. It's not moving. Simmerstyle and a lot of other brands have a logo here. And you're probably thinking, oh, it's just a bit of brand in this logo. It's just a bit of branding. It's not. It's made by, a, you know, a thicker rubber. And the reason they put it square with this mast is to keep this hole open. So when you put the mast in, you can see it actually sits open and that is because that logo is there. I think Gastra might have been the first guys to, to do that in the uh, early 2000s, I think. But it's a, it's a good tactic. Right, then you just push your mast up, be a bit careful, slowly rolling it through. Don't want to crease your sail too much. Should really walk all the way up. Don't want to do too much. Feed it through to the top, feed it down. Make sure it's tightly fit in the top. A lot of times, you know, especially when you've got a new set that's been rolled up for a bit, you have to make sure that is fit in. That's fit in nicely. Again, these sails have never had a problem. There are some other brands where there's a separate cap and that can flip on itself. So it is worth checking that. I've seen a few people out there, <laughs> mass fires through the top. You don't want that. So you got your mast in, you're happy as Larry. Do you move your sail at this point? I would. So now you've got it pointing into wind. The good idea is to push it back downwind now. You've got the mast in, you've got some stability. It's not gonna be banging around all over the place. Extension in. Now, if you've rigged this sail before, 
you might already know what your you know what your your downhaul should be at i'm going to go on to the dimensions at the bottom of the sail these are just a guide please don't blindly go off exactly those dimensions that says 382 i should have 12 centimeters because this is a 370 mast 382 12 cm of mass you know it's a simmer extension with a simmer mast on a simmer sail i would like to think <laughs> that should be about right give or take if you are rigging a simmer sail on a different mast with a different extension weirdly and i don't know how they do it people measure extensions differently you know, 12 centimetres on a similar extension might not be 12 centimetres on another extension. Again, it sounds crazy, but it is true. Go measure your extension versus someone else. You will find they can be different. So what I would do first time I'm rigging a sail, I'll put it exactly what it says there, and then I'll have a look at the sail. The idea is you have to train yourself to rig. You don't just want to be someone who just follows blindly. You want to look what you're trying to achieve, and we'll go into that in a minute. Now this is a very important part of rigging a sail. I have a little bit of OCD when it comes to this and I'm like beach police. If I'm on the beach and I see you've got your ropes crossed or something, you ain't going on that walk before I've unlaced laced your ropes and I've redone them. I am terrible. There's something in me that I just can't see it. So with the Simmer extension, it's like the same, I think as the 0.7, there's a few others who've got the same extension. And, a, and, a, and, a, hook, and a, a roller hook which faces down like this, what you do, main one is up the middle. That's a key. So up the middle. Also a good, good tip for your rope is to cut this and put a bit of glue on there, a little bit of super glue. I haven't done that, but <laughs> that is definitely a good tip. So up the middle, then you come onto here, onto the top hole, down the top, down the top. So it's like that. Then over the top of the outside, like that. And then we go round the bottom up the back hole there. And then you end up with the rope on this side. And obviously we go up here and then we go to the thing. And look at that, look at that. That is absolutely seamless. I can tell you now, there is people out there watching this video going, oh, that's how you do it. Ah, mine are always crossed. This is the way to do it. I don't care what you say in the comments. It does change with different extensions. So then obviously we put the, uh, the downhaul on. I never usually put loads on straight away, especially with new cell, but we'll put it onto what we think. Look at that beauty. Looks nice actually. Because the first time I've actually rigged the production up. So that's not rigged at the moment with a lot of downhaul. Again, let me, uh, I'm going to leave that for now. We're going to put the boom on. But I think it's going to take a little bit more. Looks nice, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm excited. Just so you know, I'm not going wave sailing today. We have no waves. We have no wind. I'm literally just making this video for you. So that is... Let's just rig it block to block. That's pretty much block to block on what they say. It looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. I'll wait till I put the boom on, but yeah. And then you're probably asking, what are you looking at, Ben? What are you looking at? Well, to me, what I look at when I put down a hole on, obviously we've got the settings. We know it's roughly right, but I'm just looking at how the sail pulls away from the mast here. So when I put the down all on, you'll see, if I take the down all off, you'll probably see even better. You know, you can already see that's too little. If a lot more off. So as you put the down all on, that starts to pull out. I like that on a four batten sail, the second batten down starts pulling out from the mast, which I'll try and show you. You see how that just pulls out? Bit of wind. And then I still like quite a lot of shape here. The simmers do have quite a lot of shape down the bottom end. Gives it nice stability, especially in the four batten sails. So then we grab the boom. So we obviously come down to the settings. Boom 157. Now again, the boom, it's just a guide. This is set for 158. 
the boom makes a huge difference. Where you put the boom to how much um, outhaul will be on the sail. So if you measure from the middle, it will probably be right. But like me, if you have a low boom, you will need to put less outhaul. If you have a high boom, you'll need to put more. I'll demonstrate that when I actually put the outhaul on by moving it up and down the luff. But obviously, that's very high for me. But I'll leave it there just for educational purposes. We go over to the outhaul, obviously. Loop, loop, go. I mean, if you're not using this system here, you know, with a loop already in, the knot already in the harness, and then you just literally loop up, make sure your ropes are straight, loop back round that little thing, and then, you know, you're good to go. So then, for me, outhaul. Again, that's what it says it should be. It looks about right. I haven't actually... You see people do that? And you're like, you're like what are they doing? To me, I don't know, I always do it. I don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm feeling the tension. Again, it's not something you could just tell someone, oh, you just feel, and if you feel the boom, it's not like that. You're feeling how much tension is in the sail. And after years of using the sail and using it and understanding how much it feels like, um, that's kind of how I do it. Sounds ridiculous. I'll explain a more technical way. But so that's how we've got the sail rigged at the moment. I left the downhaul off from before. Let me just put it back on. So that is how they recommend the sail to be rigged. Exactly like that. Now let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about with the outhaul. So at the moment, you can see quite a bit of tension in the sail. If I move this boom up, look at that, it's touching the boom here. The, basically, you can see it's starting to wrinkle. You know, there's not enough outhaul on that sail now. Look at it. And that's just from moving the boom up the cutout. So if you're a tall rider and you look at this boom 157, it's not going to work. Essentially, the same thing. If I lower the boom, it will hammer on the outhaul because of the angle change. So if I put the boom to the bottom, you can see how much tighter that is now. This is like solid compared to what it was before. So it makes a difference where you put the boom in the cutout to how much outhaul you have on. You need to know how much outhaul you have. So let me just recap a few things. Where I have my boom, usually I have mine quite low. I'm quite short anyway, but I have mine just off the bottom of that. Maybe sometimes a bit higher. And just looking at it visually, was probably how I have my sail. This is a new sail. So what I do need to do is check the batten tension. Now, the very important battens, or the ones you should be really focusing on, are these two in a wave sail. These two are where you get your stability, especially in a four batten sail. You've only got four battens. So if you've got no stability from these ones, the sail will move around. So you want these relatively tight. You don't want them so they're S-bending like this. If you start to see the batten S-bend, you know you've got too much tension. You want all the crinkles out, and to be fair, just looking at these, I will get my tensioner, but looking at those, they look pretty good. Obviously, in all new sails, you will have a Allen key, baton tensioner from Simmerstyle. You actually uh, can open a bottle of beer. I mean, bottle of coke or something you know keep yourself healthy so it's quite a useful tool to have sometimes people put it on the car keys but I would say I mean that already I wouldn't tension that up much and again it's a visual thing what you're looking for is a nice smooth entry on the sail everything looks good there's no wrinkles on the pocket it looks good I don't there's no reason to crank that up anymore just because it's new doesn't mean you have to put tension on if there's tension on all good move to this one See this one, yeah, so this one has got a very slight, I don't know if you'll see it on the camera, but there is a slight little wrinkle there. So I think with a one, with a two turn, 
two turn is gone. So just a tiny bit of tension. I'm going to leave the top ones. I don't like to crank the top ones up at, at all. Um, I should also mention, very important this, when you're putting the, the mast in the sail, always check that the, the, the ferrule is joined together before you put the downhaul on. You know you've all done it, and if you haven't, you've probably not been windsurfing that long, but most of us who've been windsurfing a long time have done it. You're in the water, you're about to beach start, and your hand goes, or you've been sailing for half an hour, that's the good one. And you know, half an hour before you've been on the beach going, what the hell, the settings look all look wrong, you know, there's too much downhaul and you're changing the extension. And what you didn't realize is there's a gap like that where the masters come unstuck when you're pushing it together. That's usually when you're doing it downwind. Uh, so check that, make sure there's no problems, there's no problems there. Um, sneaky one here, this might be, uh, you know, good for a few people as well. Um, downhaul. So on this simmer extension, it'll be like a lot of the other extensions as well. What, what are you going to do with the rope? So for me, it goes back up behind, so it gets it out of the way of the UJ, so that's nice and neat. And then this, you put it on your palm or your hand like this, you roll it round, round, you keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, till you get to about there. And then you feed this bit of bottom rope through the loop you've made here. So you have this, and then you grab the bunch and pull it through. So then you have this bunch of rope. Why is that useful? Because now you have this little pocket, this Velcro pocket. A lot of people don't do this and it is so useful. And you tuck it in that pocket, you close the pocket, and now that big bunch of rope won't pull out of the Velcro. If it does, it's very neatly on your sail. If you just stuff it in there, it's waving around, it comes out a little bit and you, it's not nice. So that keeps it nice and clean out of the way. So that's, that's a nice thing. Um, Outhaul, you know, nothing, nothing crazy going on here. Like I said, I don't like a lot of outhaul. So when I'm sailing, especially on the black tips, again, I've not spent so much time on the Evoke, it might be a bit less, but I had the sail touching the boom, you know, sometimes to near the harness lines, which might sound insane to a couple of the old school guys out there. You know what I mean? It's touching sometimes to here because nowadays booms are narrower. They're closer together. The old school booms are really kind of like big bows. These new ones are a bit narrower. The sails are deeper because we've got less bands. We want a bit more sort of tractory, pulley feeling, like drive. So it does touch the boom. That's personal, maybe. Some of the guys out there might not have that. I definitely have. And a lot of my friends on the Pedalway Tour and stuff will all have their sail touching the boom. So that, that's an important thing to remember. Don't think you've rigged your sail wrong because it's touching the boom. Um, obviously tie off your lines on the outside, nothing special here. Is it a clove hitch or whatever they call it? I don't know, maybe it's not even round turn. I don't know, that, that, that knot. Learn, learn your knots, people. Um, let's talk about um, sailing. So you've, you, let's say you're an old school sailor. You've grown up with the mentality of the wind's picking up, I'm just going to downhaul the thing, pull the outhaul on, and I'm going to survive. You're going to have a problem with the newer style sails. And I say the newer style sails, these sails have been around for quite a long time now. We're talking probably over 10 years or at least 10 years. Uh, you know, the four baton sail with a bit of grunt. They don't like too much downhaul and too much outhaul. If you downhaul the shit out of it, outhaul it, you end up with a very flat profile. And so the power is not stable. The power moves around. And the worst thing you can have is a weight, like let's say you're in the gym. You could pick up a really heavy weight if you know exactly where it is and you're pulling from exactly the source. If that weight is moving and you're trying to harness it, you're gonna not even shift half the weight, less than. So it's the same with the sail. You want the power, even if it's more, coming from a solid position. So there is a maximum downhaul for these sails. With a four band sail, you need to keep the stability because there's less battens, and that comes from the profile of the sail, the depth of the sail. So you wanna keep a bit of depth. Obviously, you want it to go a little bit loose into, inside those top two, but you don't want it coming down, you know, going crazy loose down here. Um, I'm going to put the sail on the board, have a little rotation, and I'm going to have a think if there's anything else I need to tell you guys. 
Also, very important thing to remember. And don't forget this, guys. Just move this out of the way. Color coordination. <laughs> oh, look at this. Is it too much? I don't know. It looks pretty sick. Okay, so it's very difficult to rig a sail without any wind. Um, I would probably have maybe a little bit less outhaul on for my likings because I have a lower boom. But again, it's difficult to test without having some proper uh, wind in the sail. But that feels, well, actually, now well, that feels all right, that. Feels pretty good, I have to say, that feels pretty good. I might have to go a bit higher. Maybe I'm getting taller in my old age. Yeah, there we go. So you can, I can feel that instantly. Obviously I've been saying a long time. I raise the boom, it's like taking a little bit out, out all off and I can instantly feel it just loosened up. Again, it's very difficult to teach people some of the things that I'm feeling and it does come. But, but you've got to spend time in the water. You've got to notice what your settings are doing. And when you come in from a session and you've got a sweet spot, you're like, oh my God, that felt epic today. Write it down, you know, write it down inside the sail here with a bit of a permanent pen. I think actually on the simmer, there is a little uh, name tag thing here. You can actually write it on the sail. You know, if your base is working 1cm off the bottom and the boom is at a perfect angle and you've got a height don't be afraid to mark it. If it's your sail, you've got a brand new sail, a little bit of mark is not gonna do any good. And then next time you rig it, it's gonna be so much easier. This feels good. Oh, I'm excited, come on. Okay, so there we go. That was my very long and probably tedious, if you're still watching this, well done, well done. Uh, I hope a few of you old school guys are gonna put a little less downhaul on some of your sails. Obviously, it does vary from make to make. Um, five batten sails, I will say, can handle a bit more downhaul. You have to remember that. The four batten sails, it is less downhaul. Uh, this, you know, the, the, the Evoke, as this one goes to five meter, we go five batten, you can handle more downhaul. So just remember that. If you've got a four batten sail and you're thinking, bloody hell, it's really unstable, Ben, maybe you're doing too much downhaul or too much outhaul. Um, so there you go, that is my uh, take on uh, how to rig the Evoke. Uh, very similar to the black tip, I don't think you're going to find too much different. It's the same theory. Um, both cells work very, very similarly. So there you go, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, we'll see you for the next one.